You go with a smooth wall at first. I was. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad that you talked me into this. This is much more in line with what I'm trying to achieve. I can't believe how clean and straight your guys are. I hope so much. All right, as promised, it's the fourth video of five, maybe six videos. And you're definitely going to need some tools here, so check it out. You're going to need a bunch of batteries. You need a skill saw. We got two of them on site. Going to need a rotor hammer. We also got two of them on site. Going to need a saw saw. We also got two of them on site. Going to need this rebar, bender, and cutter duplex nailer and last but not least you're going to need the terminate which is a rebar gun hope everyone is doing well staying positive it's 2021 we made it as with any job logistics is important white cap is dropping off a 2x12s and a ton and a half of number five rebar we like to keep the material as close as possible to where we're building it this increases our efficiency and productivity I want to have valve excavation, not a sack, do all excavation. But as you can see here, we did have to fine tune some of it by hand. One of the first things we do is frame the face of the footing. This allows us to get the proper measurements for the face of the wall, which is important. As you can see here, we do one side and then we go to the other, kind of line it up in the corner, make sure everything is square. As we frame, we use our laser to double check our elevations. To get more detail on how we frame the back of this retaining wall, you can check the link above or below. We have a separate video for that. Got a couple things here. Guys are working on the back of the retaining wall so we can start stacking our boards, you'll see later. And also, we cut into rebar for our footing. So, the surveyor was out to check the elevations for the pad of the house. So, while he was out there, we also had him check the elevations for our footing. So now we're ready to start framing the back of the wall. You probably notice one stake that's in the ground. It's about a foot above the two by 12. And then we have this other stake that's coming above, which is about six feet. This allows us to stack the boards, as you can see here. to stick around to the end so you can see how this retaining wall turned out and also subscribe to our channel greatly appreciate it the same process is done on the side again you can check the link above or below to check us out Installing the back of the retaining wall it kind of goes more in detail on what we're doing. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We greatly appreciate it. So besides using a rebar for a workout, it's also important for any retaining wall project, especially out here in Cali. We use a ton and a half of number five rebar. Everything is spaced approximately 12 inches on center. We 
Here we're tying our verticals with our horizontal. Again, everything is 12 inches on center. As far as the footing goes, it was a double mat rebar, 12 inches on center as well. You can check out the link above or below. We also have a video on how we go about installing the rebar and kind of goes more in detail on what it takes to put it together. Okay, we about to button up the front besides working out. We still use 2x12s and the process is very similar to what it is in the back. We do add some form oil here. This helps keep the wood in good shape so we can use it on different projects. But once we got our stakes in place, it's just a matter of stacking them up like Legos. Leave a comment below to let us know what was your favorite Lego set as a kid. Here we're adding our cinchman ties. These are called WT8s. The WT stands for wall ties. The 8 stands for 8 inches. We use these approximately 12 to 16 inches. This helps secure the wall when you pour in the concrete. And here we're using our duplex nailer just to make sure everything is secure. Extra secure. It never fails. You will have to make that Home Depot run when working on the job site. Here we're offloading the 2x12s that we purchased, along with adding the form mold to help protect them. And you can follow us on social media, the links are below. And while you're down there, subscribe, like, leave a comment. We greatly appreciate it. Making sure everything is nice and secure before we get ready for this concrete. As you can see, the concrete has arrived. We use Folsom Ready Mix out there in Sacramento for this pour. I have to admit, they were pretty much on time. Most concrete plants are always saying, we're on our way, we're on our way, but they was pretty much on time here. I think the station is uh, about 10 minutes from here. We ended up using about 36 yards for this project. It's not really much to see here, so I'm gonna let the video play out a little bit. So as crazy as it may sound, the fun part is stripping the wall. And we do have a video, you can check the link above or below, of us stripping the wall. It kind of goes in detail on the process of what it takes to strip the wall. Which is not much, but it is a little science to it. So I definitely appreciate you guys' time. This is our second video for 2021. We look to have a good year. If you're in the Sacramento Bay Area, hit us up. The link is below. Remember, it's cool to ask for help, hang around people that are positive, and 2021 is finally here. Make it a good one. You're almost taller than it. It looks like wood, <laughs> but it's concrete. Yeah. Well, I don't know why I'm like envisioning a mountain.